kayak camp back on another overnight adventure it's been a while I know but I'll explain more about that later um, we're at the River Stour little hamlet called Stratford St Mary we've got the fishing kayak going I've taken the trolley off but I think I might have to go further up the river we're going to be going up towards Langham Flumes. I'm not sure if that's the Dedham way. I have to look at the map. Or well, we've got to go that way. We'll soon find out. There's a portage point here anyways. We are in the winter months now, so I'm in full winter kit. Dry suit, so if I do end up in the river, I'm not going to get cold shock or anything like that. Especially at the minute, because uh, there's been a few Instance that just recently of people having problems and even dying while paddle boarding without the correct equipment. We'll get going. I think we've got to go that way. I'll check the map. I've got the trolley in there just so in case I do need to pull it around because it's a bit heavy. I've got um, camp kit on the back, some dry clothes for tonight. Got some fishing gear with me as well, so we might do a little bit of fishing. We've got all day and it's not very far, so we've got to take it easy because I've got a, a shoulder injury. As I said, more about that later on. We'll get going. Nice to be back out again. Supposed to have a mixture of cloud and sun. No rain forecast. It's also a little bit milder today. Overnight lows is around about 9 degrees I think. So it's not going to be particularly cold. Last night um, and a couple of nights before that it's been down to zero. We've been adding ice on the windscreen of the cars. We are in winter mode now, so the the clocks have gone back. So it will be dark around about six o'clock, like properly dark. Obviously when you're indoors, it seems to get dark quicker, but when you're outdoors, it does give you a little bit of extra time because your eyes take a while to adjust to the... When you're outdoors, you, you have a better vision. launched at Stratford St Mary, going to be going down to a place called Langham Flumes, hopefully overnight in off a little tributary of this river called the River Box. It's actually a place I stopped at on my um, Sudbury to Stour Walk, um, Sudbury to Fort um, Stour Walk. It's easy to pull the kayak out there because there's, um, there's access, access to the river that goes low. Middle of nowhere, so it shouldn't be a problem. Camped there before with no issues, you can see the soul. Because it's, because it's a, a well away from the footpaths and stuff. There's quite a few foot, foot, footpaths around this area, but as we found out on, the, on that walk, that there's a lot of places where you can't actually go near the stour because they're private properties. I don't think we'll see many people to be honest because it's um, winter time, most people won't go on the river in the kayak in the winter. 
if they haven't got the pro pro proper equipment. You really don't want to end up in this river um, water because it's pretty cold. Well, it's the first um, building along the way. It's a place called Hyam Hall Farm, but isn't it? I suspect that's a private launching point. Yeah, it's a big sign that says private. Very nice, having a house that goes down to the river. Massive house to go with it and all. Church built in on the ground. There's the house that we'll do a turn and you can see. Very nice. As far as I can make out, paddling wise, we're about a quarter of the way there. Little swing on the tree there, the kids must have had a bit of fun growing up around here, especially in the summertime. Nothing down here in the evenings in the summer. Lovely place to be. It's very wide, the river's very wide at this point as well. It's wider here than what it is downstream where, the, where it meets the sea. That's because it's wide, it means it's very slow flowing. We are paddling against the current, we're also going against the wind as well. So tomorrow's paddle back is going to be a lot easier. Just going to explore the river today. It's been, it's the first time I've actually been on the river in the kayak this year. Went out on the sea a couple of times in the summer, but I've actually been on the river. It's been a bit of a Crap year as far as um, getting out and about is concerned. Once we get to camp later on, I'll explain more about that though. Nothing nice, uh, nothing really bad, but enough to not be going out. It's just been one of them years. Sometimes you have to take the rough and smooth, some years are good, some years are bad. Solid now, so moving forward, we'll be able to get out and about a bit more. As you know, I don't mind a bit of winter camping, so we'll be carrying on all throughout the year. This and the boat. My original plan for today was actually to be two nights on the boat, but the way the sea state is at the minute, we've got a wind against tide situation for the next two days, so it makes it pretty uncomfortable to be out there. I thought I'd do this instead. I haven't done it for a long time. Either way, it's nice to be out. We'll carry on going further down the river and come back. Getting a little bit of paddle splashes on me. It's a lot less wind um, than what's actually forecast unless it's going to pick up later. Very nice on the river at the minute. We get going. Right, we can't get up to Langham Flumes. We've got this bloody great tree in the way. Looks like quite a recent break, but there's a, a new wood show in there. Langham Flumes is just on the other side of it, not very far. Can't get out that far unfortunately. It doesn't matter, this is not the intended destination. I thought I'd come up here just to see what it's like. It's quite fast flowing this part of the river. D down there it sort of narrows quite a lot and I'm actually holding on to the ground because the back of the kayak's stuck on something. It's a shame. I can hear the water running, it's just further over so I'm not far away. You get this sometimes. You get the navigation notices, warning of things like this on, on Facebook, but I must admit I didn't see this one. But it looks fairly recent. Obviously we've had quite a lot of wind and storms recently, so that's obviously come down. It's a bit of a pain really, um, for anyone who's coming down from Langham, because 
there's no, no nowhere right, really around here where you can pull out and then put back in again. Oh well, it's just one of them things. We we'll run further down the river and you see the faster moving section. It took a little bit of effort to paddle up here and that through that. The reason it gets um, fast is because it gets very shallow and it also narrows. So obviously that large body of water has got to squeeze through that little tiny gap. There's been quite a few um, blockages all the way down, sort of like where trees have come down. We've managed to get past them, but that one is a no-no. Places like this tend to be quite good for fishing. They're like the old fast river species like Chub and Barbel love places like this. Just going to drift down with the tide, I think. Just control the steering. This is cool. <laughs> Paddling with no effort. <laughs> it's hard work coming up though. Just because it's harsh, fast. Paddling against it was a bit of a challenge. It's actually quite cool to go into little places like this where the water slackens or you get a bit of an eddy. Just to sit there for a whip, chillax. So the water deepens here, that's, that's why the current has slowed right down. Another good spot for fishing because the, the food collects, all the food that's running down the river. It's deposited into places like this. It's completely calm in this section. So you can see the leaves running down the river at Farrell's Lick there, so you can see what speed of the current is. See down there, there's a, another tree that's come partially down. Not a problem though, because you can get past it. I know this river is quite popular with paddle boarders, so they must have a little trouble getting past these fallen trees. building that we went past in the Stour Walk. That's the bridge you go across. That means we're not very far away from the river box, which is our intended destination. If you remember, anyone who watch, watches my videos, the last time I was here, it was actually chucking it down. <laughs> Even though the weather forecast was supposed to be good. With really heavy rain, I, if I remember, I actually sheltered just on the other side of this bridge. I think there's some tall fir trees there that I shelt some big tall trees I sheltered under. I don't think this um, pumping station is actually active anymore, it's just a, a derelict building. You can see most of the water for this area comes from reservoirs. We 
Looks like the river forest has been doing some forestry work. Some of the trees have been cut down. Then they're the ones that have caused problems with people accessing the river, like that one we had further back there. A navigational hazard. found a spot. Not the plan one though, so I couldn't get there. My original plan was to go up this little river, but as you can see it's a bit small. I couldn't get up there, there's just too too much vegetation. The planned spot was further down, but this spot's okay. I pulled the kayak up here and it got a bit muddy doing it because I tried going down there and pushing my way through, but it was just too narrow in places so I had to give up on that. So everything's a bit filthy at the minute unfortunately so we have to give it a good wash when I get back can have some food drink might get changed as well got the tin up starting to lose the light I've only got about a half hour of light left gone for a simple option tonight the Andake um, Ultralight, not the sorry, the um, Flames Creed Lanshan ones. Not the end This one's even more simpler. Uh, Thermo Rest Mat, inflatable. 500 weight down bag, and the Trekology pillow. Underneath that, I've got one of them thin silver foil things. Has a little bit extra protection, but it's mostly to protect the mat. The mats are pretty valuable, so they're worth protecting. It's very warm, their mats, the Firma Rest um, Ultralight, whatever they call it. Going to get some food on the go in about an hour's time. Pretty basic, just a, a chunky big soup, um, beef and vegetable with a couple of rolls and some snack bows, bars and nuts and raisins for dessert and later on the hot chocolate for turning in Any trouble with camping this time of the year is the, is the light and it's not that late it's only half past four it'll be dark by five-ish the river's been quiet there's a couple of people shooting in the field just over there earlier, I assume the people are there's a big house in the distance there. I assume it's them. I don't think they own the land on this side though. I think the land on this side is like common land. People fish on this side. I haven't actually seen anyone though. We had some big herd of cows here just earlier, but there's only one left now. That, uh, a couple. Of Tell a lie, they've actually moved off in the distance over there. Interesting to watch, they were a few good moves. Haven't been out much this year. I said I was going to explain a bit more, but what it was, two weeks after my last camp, which I think was the beginning of July, my wife became very poorly with gallbladder issues. She was in and out of hospital. Well, she actually spent two weeks in the hospital with that. She was in and out of all sorts of problems. Um, I couldn't leave her at night and for several weeks afterwards as well. And that took me right, uh, that took away any um, overnight in right until the end of more or less the end of August to be honest. Obviously, family comes first, especially your wife, especially she watches these as well. <laughs> I know, that's not, that's not nothing to joke about. Family always comes first. There's always time for camping and sailing, whatever, at a later date. 
I was all ready to get back to it at the end of right in September and then I did a, a couple of small trips on the boat which I didn't actually film and then um, beginning of October got my timelines slightly wrong here yeah, beginning of October, I had a really nasty accident on the way to work. I come off my bike um, quite badly. I broke two ribs, cracked a little bit of bone off my hip, smashed my face up. Uh, my knees, took the skin off my knees, all sorts of problems. I was in pretty bad shape for a few weeks and uh, I was off work for nearly six weeks. And I went back to work uh, last week. This week's my first full week of being at work. It's been okay. I've, I've still got a few neck issues. As I said, that's gonna, that might take several uh, months for that to get 100%. That's the reason why you haven't seen me for a while. Mixture of the miss, uh, wife being ill and me being uh, buggered as well. So just one of them years this year, unfortunately. But no matter, we'll carry on. It's actually beginning of um, November now. And it's getting starting to get cold. It's a little bit mild than what it has been. The last few uh, nights has been almost down to zero with um, ice and frost on the windscreen in the morning. But today is supposed to be around about nine degrees overnight, so it's a little bit milder. No rain forecast. We're going to get some food. I, I suspect I'm starting to fade now because the lights don't really go using the GoPro. Because um, obviously, being in the kayak, you can't let your normal camera get wet. Tomorrow morning is supposed to be all right. Film some more in the morning. Catching breakfast. Got a uh, bacon and uh, egg wrap tomorrow. I brought the Trangia cooking set tonight. Obviously with the kayak you don't need to worry about the weight so much so you can bring what you want basically. I'm going to get some food on shortly and get warmed up. See you tomorrow morning. Good morning. Had a comfortable night's sleep. Went to bed fairly early, about eight. Up around about five-ish. Packed away in. The... Just as it's getting light, just had breakfast. Uh, a bacon and egg uh, wrap, and an orange, and a really bad cup of coffee because the milk had gone a bit funny. We're going to pack this lot away. Tent was just um, there, as you can see from the little bit of flat ground. It's a nice flat spot. Doesn't look very flat, but it was comfortable. Had a really good night's sleep, to be honest, because I'm um, getting a bit early. Really warm. I wore, I wore my softies inside the sleeping bag. It was only a lightweight sleeping bag, but wearing the softies inside, down softies, made the made it nice and thick that with a, a thermal sleep suit it's a very comfy night we'll pack this away get going not in too much of a hurry it's, it was still pretty early it's only about half six in the morning i think it is at the minute oh seven o'clock just turn seven o'clock so in no particular hurry, we've only got about an hour's paddling to get back to the car, so no particular hurry. Back in the water. 
a bit of a challenge getting down. There we've done it. Almost lost a shoe in the mud. along with the current here. As I said there's no hurry to get back. It's not too far to go. Covered in mud again. I'll come back a little bit later on. <laughs> 